and namaste. Welcome to Planetary Gig Talk, Tales of Music and Magic. I'm your host, Jefferson Glassy, Chief Spiritual Dude of the Planetary Gig Society, whose mission is making connections through music with the intention of bringing peace. I'm really excited, really honestly today, to be talking with a fabulous musician and a person who I met at the Sanctuary Summit uh, at the farm uh, in uh, Summertown, Tennessee, not too long ago. And we can talk a little bit more about how that happened and what that was about. But Nico Moore, Nico, speak free more. Thank you very much for, for taking the time. Uh, you're outside in a beautiful spot. And I just, I've been looking forward to talking with you about about music and, and you and, and other stuff. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Appreciate you, Jefferson. Yeah, just thanks for having me. You know, uh, yeah, this this is great. I, mean, I was looking forward to this conversation ever you know, since we met at the summit. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, thanks. And uh, you know, we're we're. I'm just going to mention. I'm not outdoors. I'm just behind a you know a, a picture of the Nepalese Mount Himalayas. Um, but Nico is outside, and we opted that it was such a beautiful sight that, you know, there may be a little bit of noise here and there, but we're just going to roll through it. Um, so um, I guess just a first question of, you know, who you are, how are you doing, what, how did you get to the um, the Sanctuary Summit? You know, you know, Biko, or how did that sort of happen? Maybe tell a little bit about what that, that was. Yeah, well... Uh, for the last three years up until December, me and my daughter had been um, traveling around kind of mostly the Midwest, a um, little bit in the South, um, just doing music, doing art, connecting with people, family, um, just moving around. I got a, I got a band um, and, you know, more love machine is what we were calling it, you know, and just moving around doing art. Um, happened to get to the farm, um, looking into community and um, reached out a couple times to see if I can play music um, at the market days there. Um, so happened to work out, I think it was last summer now, um, the last market or second to last market of the year, um, I got to play music for the market. And um, after that, me, me and my, my daughter stayed there for a week, got to know so much of the community, the land, the people, um, culture um, and kind of fell in love and went back a year later uh, and we're kind of looking for a place to to ground in and settle down and plant some roots and um, just so happened that uh, some opportunity had opened up on the farm where Biko um, lives in the Unity Center there um, and we had met and talked and stayed in contact and yeah it just worked out and then couple months you know he's like well you know are you ready for the sanctuary summit i was like yeah I'm, I'm absolutely ready for the sanctuary summit i had wanted to go the prior year but um just didn't work out with the travel plans and all that so um it was it was uh it was beautiful and amazing i was so grateful to to be able to move there and and just kind of fall right into the energy and the and, the, and the amazement amazing beauty of the sanctuary summit and, and the medicine that that is um so yeah i was definitely grateful for for that uh, that synchronistic, divine flow of, of, of time and space that that happened. Um, wow! Yeah, that's that's the best kind of flow too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you know, just it, things roll out like the universe wants them to go. How old is your daughter? Nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. She's getting a pretty good upbringing, going around and really seeing the real the real deal. You know what really yeah. makes us human and, and music and stuff. Exactly. That's that's yeah, very yeah. Um, seeing some amazing people, seeing some some amazing sights, and um, we we sprinkle in some history, uh, you know, of all different sorts. Uh, it was really cool to go to Nashville and and uh, to the history of uh, the music. I always forget the name. The, the Nash Black it, African History Music Museum. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've been there. Museum. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So it's, I, that's I, a that's a great museum. I went there with Roy Wooten. Yeah, uh, yeah. Interactive. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's really fabulous. So I, I definitely want to hear more about, you know, kind of your music now and your intentions about it. But 
I, I love to ask, how did music come into your life? Like, mm-hmm. were your parents musical? Did you, you know, get a guitar when you were two? Or mm-hmm. what instruments? I mean, how did sort of music find you? Were there some moments? And then ultimately, what was your trajectory in music from them from then when you first came to it until until now? Yeah, um, my dad was just a really big, big music fan. He loves all different types of music. Um, he, you know, he had this big sound system in our living room. Um, and, you know, he just played everything. He had all different types of music that um, that just, you know, that, that, that just filled the house. Um, and Michael Jackson was one of those those uh those sounds that i heard very often um erica badu um just they 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 permeated my spirit i feel like um <laughs> and made me move and michael jackson I, I mean i love to dance just in general and that became this um this dream of, of being just an entertainer um mm. emulating the moves of michael jackson <laughs> in my room getting the video, the VHSs of all the videos and um, live performances and um, just the way, I think, just the way this, the music of, of musicians like that who put so much intention into their, their songs and their, and their performances. Um, and then the way it, 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 the way it moves people. Um, and the way it, you know, moves people for action, the way it moves, you know, culture um, into into believing and 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 and, and hope and faith and um, I, yeah, I I fell in love with that. And so, um, you know, fast forward through life, I got into sports, got into you know, um, got into just trying to figure out my way around, you know, life. Um, and it wasn't until sophomore year in high school um you know like I was in choir and things like that but it wasn't until my sophomore year in high school I got into musical theater um and I figured out that's what that was my purpose you know <laughs> it was like that was where you know I I I found that that reason to to exist um and I was actually playing basketball at the time and I ended up quitting basketball to try out for Greece the musical and to be a dancer, my friend, one of my friends was a dancer and he was like, you should just try it. We need more guys. We need, you should just do it. And I was like, well, I'm not going to play in this, this upcoming game. It was like, you know, arch the rival, across town rival. And I just did, I was a short guy. I wasn't, you know, <laughs> and I was an entertainer at that in, in basketball. I, I wanted to, I wanted to make the, the fancy play and, the, and I wanted to make the crowd go, wow, you know, <laughs> rather than <laughs> making the, the, the correct basketball, you know, play. Um, so it just made sense. And got into musical theater, followed that through high school, um, even got a couple years in college um, at Columbia in Chicago um, in musical theater. Um, you know, but then life happens, right? And I, I had a I had a child um, 17 years ago now, 18 years ago now. Um, and he was in Wisconsin and I had to make a choice whether or not I was gonna continue to pursue musical theater um, at this very expensive school <laughs> or whether or not I was going to just be a father. Um, and so I chose to be a father. Um, but then the world, you know, seeing the, seeing the, 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 the ways of the world, um, you know, 18 years ago, obviously this it, it's, it's been shifting, um, in a lot of different ways. And, and music was my only outlet at that time. Um, you know, other than just you know being a father, it was it was it became um, how I how I processed. Um, and at that time, I honestly was I was was kind of was kind of angry at the world. I I wondered why I couldn't just be a father. Couldn't the world wants to, us to raise children, you know, in a in this positive, beautiful way? But I can't do that if I'm you know, going to slave at a job or 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 not using the things that make me feel most alive to you know, to, um, to sustain and support myself and my, and my family, right? So a lot of the music I was writing at the time um, was kind of an expression of a frustration um, at the systems and at the ways of the world. And, um, 
Yeah, and that 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 then continued to to <laughs> to evolve into the man that you met and the musician that you've met, <laughs> um, you know, over time. Yeah. Wow, great great trajectory. Um, so when you were in uh, the music theater, were you, did you had you picked up an instrument by then, a particular instrument, or did that come later? Or were you mainly I can't, singing, I can't, dancing, or what? Yeah. Singing, dancing was the main thing, and I leaned heavily on um, on that. Um, began writing poetry, so I hadn't really, and I I, I was diagnosed with um, diagnosed with ADHD when I was when I was younger, so it was it was very interesting to to um, to navigate my patience and my um, ability to to really even focus on one thing for a long time, and um, and in the theater world, it, it kind of was surprising to me that. I got into, you know, reading lines and remember memorizing lines for scripts, and I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> and then so, so realizing later, um, and probably with, it was only maybe two or three years ago now, where I picked up an instrument and really, really mm -hmm. let, let myself sit with it. Um, I picked up the guitar, and 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 I was kind of stubborn in the, in the process. I just didn't want to learn anything from anybody, and I wanted to kind of figure it out myself. So. It took me a, a lot longer than probably you know could have, but I feel I feel very cool. I feel very comfortable and and positive about how how I learned and the relationship I have with um, with the guitar. It was it was a personal one. I call it my um, emotional support instrument because um, I just walk around with it and it just and let whatever feelings need to come through in that way um, come through. Yeah, well, I, I think you're pretty precocious. Um, let, uh, understanding that you know sort of music was something through you that really fulfilled you you know fairly early on i didn't really get enthralled with any kind of music that i thought i could play until blues harmonica when i was about 42 years old yeah yeah um, and then recently guitar and and it, it it can take a lifetime to learn these instruments that's for sure but it seems to me you've tapped into a way where you just are have learned to become you and even dealing with these issues it is frustrating my god here we are we're look we're in a beautiful places and we're having a wonderful conversation and we know beautiful people and all this and and bombs are dropping all over the world and man oh man it gets really frustrating i get frustrated with life too so um have you been sort of uh touring around or or um was some of the, the recent time you spent was it doing gigs different places have you have you been you're kind of a are you a solo before you were a solo performer at the at the sanctuary some summit when i saw you but uh, have you played with bands i mean what are you what's your yeah yeah so before um before traveling around uh irie and i lived in minneapolis minnesota um and I was an educator. Um, I worked at a couple different uh, charter schools in Minneapolis, kind of doing a behavioral, um, behavioral and academic support specialist job um, there. And so I was, you know, gigging here and there. Um, and I, we, during so during the uprisings in Minneapolis, I was living, you know, during COVID and uh, during the murder of George Floyd, I was living within two blocks of that. Um, that area and wow. I kind of, I had kind of um, shied away from music a little bit um, as far as being a performer and thinking that, that this could be something that could sustain me um, and, you know, wanting, and really wanting to, um, to take a different approach to music. I didn't want to do shows in bars or be, you know, do get, you know, booked at just any place just so I can, just so they can see, you know, just so I can show my, my talents. Right. I didn't, I didn't really want to, want to do music in that way. And um, so during the uprisings, um, I found myself using music in the way that I feel like I was really meant to be using music. Um, and all the songs that I had written fit perfectly with the moment, um, with, 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 which was just calling to love, calling to, calling to freedom, calling to empowerment, calling to, to awareness of, of, of how we're treating each other, how we're treating ourselves. And um, so a lot of these songs, became just a vehicle for me to connect with people, to um, open up space for other people to share their thoughts and feelings 
um, during this time. Uh, we ended up finding a space out in the country, um, right over the border of Minnesota and, uh, and Wisconsin, uh, a group of friends and I, um, to, to just gather and kind of have peace and solace and, and just connect, you know, creatively connect just with a rest and respite to, to heal and rejuvenate. Um, we, we got this collective of improvisational musicians that we call tribal fusion. Um, and it's really just a collective of people who just came together around a campfire, started playing our instruments, started singing our songs and just kind of, you know, just, just expressing the, the energy of what, of the times that we were in. Um, and after that, we continued to, you know, do shows here and there, do gigs and, um, play at different spaces around Minneapolis and, and we're, you know, we're, they're, they're still doing their thing in Minneapolis and I'm, you know, and, and it's, it's, a, it's one of those groups where, you know, you come, it, it, members shift, you know, it's like the, 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 who you see one time in Tribal Fusion might be totally different than the next time you see them. So um, I ebb and flow just like a, a number of other people, but the, the core of it, of the, of the idea um, is always there. So I consider myself a part of the collective of Tribal Fusion. Um, and so I, but also you know, a solo um, share, sharer of music um, when, when I need to, when I, you know, when it, when it calls or when the time is, is there. Um, and I was hoping to actually get some of the people from Tribal Fusion to come to the summit, but maybe next year um, is, is, is one of the plans, the plan, but it's a really special um, space that, that we hold. Um, it's an extension of all of us. Um, and I, it's, it's beautiful. Wow, it sounds fabulous because, you know, there is kind of this thing, well, you get a band and there's drum kit and there's a bass player and there's a guitar player and blah, blah, blah. But it sounds like what you have is sort of a a bit of a spontane spontaneity with um, improvisation, but songs that you get together and play with different groups and it's kind of fluid and Absolutely. Yeah. it sounds Always. yeah. Yeah, it's, it sounds like something that maybe more musicians should think of a bit. I mean, it yeah. sounds really great to me. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. It's def and it's one of those things that it transmutes the energy of the space. So we played at, at a at a farm um, out in Wisconsin, and it was um, you know there was just a bunch of people around, and and we just you know kind of we we fit in right around the campfire, and people are around us, and we just start start sharing whatever we, you know whatever's on our hearts um and you know the music lives and the people come around who who are just sitting in the crowd and some guy had a guitar and he comes up and he starts playing with us that he didn't you know we didn't we didn't know him he didn't know us but it, we we're come, come, kind of communicating um and sharing space and practicing being human and being vulnerable and being authentic um through the language of music um and it, it's really it's a really cool yeah cool space and opportunity to be in wow Sounds really great. I think I, I got to come uh, be part of <laughs> tribal fusion sometime. Um, so you know, you're 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 talking all of, kind of around all around in a way this power of music, but and people I think recognize that, but they don't always think, oh, what is the power of music? You know what? And I mean, is it some thing that you can feel, or is it something that comes inside you, or what does it do? How, how do you look at the power of music? How would you define it? What would you call it? And, you know, how have you seen it? I mean, it seems like you would see it every time you play with Tribal Fusion, but how do you even express what mm -hmm. it is that you're seeing, maybe in a way that other people who don't see it or understand it would, would under, understand? Yeah, I have... Um... So I had to, I had to actually write a poem for myself to explain it, right? And it's um and it's basically music is love, music is life, you know. And and to me, music is a spirit, right? It's a, it's this energy um of, of 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 sound and vibration that is all around us constantly, right? Like the birds and the trees and the, the water that's next to me, you know. It's 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 everywhere, right? And um and recognizing it as music or you know we can, we can call it that but it, it's life it's love it's 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 the magic it's the, that is just around us you know and and um and i think when we to me when we tap into it and when when we as humans um interpret it 
and bring it out, then it becomes music. But all of it, otherwise, it's just it's just it's just this extension of love and vibration that is just um, the permeating every inch and in, in, in moment <laughs> that we exist. Um, and it's interesting because um, Victor Wooten's book, uh, Spirit of Music, I like I, when I when I listened to that in the way that it was just very because I, I hadn't listened I listened to it probably two years ago and I was like I, I, I hadn't heard this it was it was amazing you know that I'm like I, I can't believe this this has not entered my life um but I love the way the explanation of music as this as this this tangible energy this entity that exists around us and that we can interact with and that calls us to, to do things and to <laughs> and ask us you know because I, I felt that I felt that call for myself to use music in this way to help help the, the this 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 energy that 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 needed to that wanted to shift the planet into a more positive and beautiful peaceful place, I was called to that. Not then I'm starting to recognize oh that person as a musician is I'm Bob Marley and this person and you know the, the Beatles and you know like all we're 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 called in this way um, to use to use music and so then it, it it makes me want to inspire others to use their their um their calling their musical calling for the same purpose um because i've seen people kind of get burnt out where they're trying to you know trying to be something that in this you know the in whether or not it's the industry or whether or not it's just in a, a local scene trying to be um something through music or trying to create something through music that might not be serving them or serving the greater good um and they kind of lose the love for it. So it kind of it's, it's been it's been been part of my one of my goals is to just help inspire um, people to to yeah to find that in themselves that 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 purpose in, in sharing music in that in that purposeful intentional way. Wow, that's so beautifully said. Everything that you just said was profound, and it's it's such a uh, I don't know again synchronicity. Um, I had fallen in love with Rising Appalachia. Uh, was it eight years ago? I can't remember. The pandemic sort of warped time, you know, from a linear <laughs> back into a cyclical thing, something. Um, and I, through a couple things, I met Biko and we were having this conversation. And he said, hey, brother, if you want to know more about music, you have to get this book, The Music Lesson by Victor Wooten. And it completely changed my life. I mean, that's why I'm doing this now. And and um, I met Victor. I've interviewed him. I've been to the uh, his camps, uh, which are not very far from Summertown. You oh, know, really? okay. Wooten Woods is just you know hitchhiking distance down from uh, the farm. Did not know that. So it's it's uh it, it's amazing how many. I think there are a lot of us sort of on this on this path. Um, and and you've said something that I th also think is is useful. Uh, for people who may be a little bit shy about their own, well, I don't know, capabilities or talents or whatever, when you said, you know, you like to try to inspire people. And yeah, I kind of do too, you know, I mean, can, can we inspire people toward more love? <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that the whole, that's what we should all be trying to do. But and um is, is that, yes, more love, then that's your, your own design, right? You have your own clothing. Yeah. Yeah, I have one of those shirts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I wear it proudly. Um, so do you, you know, when you really explain the power of music pretty well, I mean, music is really just what we are. And, and you want to inspire people and, and help people learn about that so you're doing what you're doing ideas about what you want to do in the future or what other people maybe can do to help amplify this help you know come together in music i mean it almost seems trite to say but i think it's just so true that yeah. we hear people like you and then like me talking about it so that people will understand, you know, there is a path to peace here. Right. I think, um, you know, like I was kind of telling my journey of coming to this place, it wasn't really, it wasn't a pretty one. You know, I mean, I think, I think some people, I know actually, I've, I've, I've taught a couple songwriting classes and, um, you know, 
done some youth workshops with music and um, it can get frustrating. You know, you're, 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 you're taking, you know, when you're trying to create this, this, you, you know, you have this vision of, okay, I want to create music like this. Cause I've seen this artist or I know these songs and I'm, these songs make me feel this certain way. And I'm still in this journey where it's, but it's, you know, you can only bring out what you have in, you know, and sometimes the things that are inside have to come out first before you can get to that, that ideal you know, vision of, of what you want to really say. So I think to trust the process um, of, of songwriting, of creating the sound, you know, whether or not it's, you know, um, with the instrument or with your voice, with lyrics or with, you know, with just with, with whatever, or with a group of people, you know, it's, it's trusting the process of, of, of the evolution of, of what you really, you know, have that end goal. Okay. Well, I want to make music that moves people. I want to make music that creates peace and, 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 and shares love. And, or I, you know, I want to just have this, you know, this soothing sound that, you know, makes people feel good. It might not happen right away, but to trust that if you have that intention and you put that pro you let that process build and you, and you keep that, and then you let that be your life, right? Let that, let the medicine, you know, um, I think Erica, was it, Lauren Hill says, um, she says she's like, she's the, the scientist that does the experiment on herself first, right? So she plays the songs and the music for herself, not for, you know, audience approval, but for herself. And then if it does the magic and does the work and the healing for her, then she's like, okay, maybe I can put, I can put this out because it's going to do the healing. It's going to do that same work for other people because it does it for me. And so I think it's that process, you know, and I think I definitely learned a lot from that from from that uh from that method of of, of trying it on myself first mm -hmm. this does what i think what, what i'm what i'm intending it for it to do for me then I, you know i'm gonna share it and, and there's gonna be someone who, who connects and and can relate and it was in that same you know field of, of vibration that can receive it the way i'm trying to give it out wow yeah that's that's a good tip i think for folks i mean you do have to have a little bit of a whoa look who's here hey there <laughs> um, hey, how you doing? She's thinking, who is that crazy guy with that weird hat in the mountains? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what's your name again? What? Your name? Zairi. Zairi, right, nice to meet you. <laughs> You've been traveling around a little bit, um, Tennessee and Wisconsin and all over? You know, we're in a, we're in a, doing a podcast right now. Yeah, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was, Nico, such a great, you know, all, all the things that you're saying really, I think, are very, you know, people, you, I can understand them. People can understand them. They, they can see what can be achieved. So I really appreciate you for what you're, what you're doing. What are your, what are your, just quickly, what are your plans going forward? Are you going to just keep, keep with the music and the, and the clothes you're going to be at the farm for a while, and how's it looking? Um, you can go play. You want to say it? Okay. Um, well, planning to as a as a father, um, you know, I think that that my main it, it music and parenting and art and creativity just in general um, have just really been speaking to to my purpose and to what I'm I think I'm supposed to be doing in this world right now. Um, and so, creating youth programs out on the farm. Um, is 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 the move um, that I, that that is already happening, um, kind of internally, and starting to put stuff on paper, starting to gather the people who you know me and Biko, um, you know, kind of had similar visions without even speaking on it. So we've we've been putting it together and, and having those conversations, and um, you know, and the, and the farm is 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 definitely looking for you know more youth for programs and opportunities. Um, for the kids there and the kids even in the surroundings and and kids coming in you know kids that have come to the kids, kids that were at the summit you know um so and there's a lot of people there who have a lot of valuable useful information and people who who are in relationship and can to the you know to the farm and to the community who are come who pass through like yourself you know <laughs> and you know so we tap and try to tap it into that intergenerational um you know kind of community learning you know how can we pass down what we have and how can we even learn from the youth, you know, and, and see what they have to offer us and, you know, do it, you know, in tandem. Wow. Well, that's, 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 that sounds excellent to me and boy, really relying on the the youth and trying to, you know, help them work with them is, 
It's what we need, you know, seven generations thinking is something that we are a little short on a lot of times, but all right. Well, th thanks so much for taking the time to do this uh, podcast interview and, and meeting your daughter has been a special treat there. She's beautiful. And, um, you know, I hope to see you very soon uh, around Nashville somewhere. If you ever get to DC, just, you know, look me up. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and I think people can find you, I know, on Facebook and, and Nico Moore. It's there right there in the in uh Instagram, um speak speak underscore free and the number one. Um and then all my music is on all the all the um streaming streaming yeah. sites free. Yeah, it's great. Okay, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Hope you had a, enjoyed the conversation, and we will see you soon. <laughs>